Come on, can we give God some praise on this Sunday morning? Only He can purify us. I'm so proud of each and every one of you for making it out to church today. There's so many other places you could have decided to, to be, but you're here in the house of God. You made it. I'm not sure what you had to get through to be here, but you're here today. And today, I believe, is going to be a great day. I believe God has a word for you. I know he loves you. I know he has a plan for your life. We absolutely love you, but nobody loves you like God loves you. He knows everything you need. He knows your future. He knows your plan. And today, he's giving, he's giving you the opportunity to receive everything that he has for you. I said this earlier, but, you know, in a room like this, it's so important that we get everything that God has for us. Why would we come in one way and leave the same? Why would we come to a hospital sick if the doctor's in the room today? Jesus is here. He's in the room. And I believe everything you need, you can find it in him. Maybe you came hurting. Maybe you came broken. Maybe you came depressed or lost or confused. Jesus is everything that we need. How many know that that's true? So again, I just want to say welcome. Welcome to service. Let's jump right in. If you can't bow your heads with me, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you that today is a great day. Today's a day you've made. And Father, I pray, Lord, that as we receive from you, you would speak directly to us. Let your word speak to our hearts, to our situations. God, we lift up every family in this room that's dealing with, with uh, uh, just a loss today, God, if they're dealing with loss, if you're dealing with pain, I pray right now for those hearts in the room. And God, we lift up right now the person that's struggling to make ends meet. And they just, they want to get back on their feet. They want to get clean. They want a new beginning. I pray for that heart. I pray for that person right now that's in this room. We, Father, right now, we just pray you would send your love right at them, God. You would send your peace right now to them, and you would show them, remind them today that you love them, you have a plan for them. God, we lift up Pastor Marco right now. He's speaking at our Pomona campus. We lift up our Pomona campus. We lift up our Arrowhead campus, God. We lift up, God, our, our, our L.A. campus, our Kenya, Uganda, or Arizona, our TJ campus, God. We lift up all the campuses to you. God, we lift up the surrounding churches in the area. We thank you, Lord, for the rock and Pastor Dan, God, we thank you for Ecclesia, Pastor Beckley. We thank you for all the Temple Missionary Baptist Church, God. We thank you for all the churches in the area that are lifting up the name of Jesus. We pray that today will be a kingdom day. And Lord, it would be a day where souls are saved and lives are transformed all over the world. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. amen. Go ahead and take your seat. Give your neighbor a high five. Let them know I'm so glad to see you today. All right. Who's excited to be in church this morning? I know I'm excited to be here. I'm really grateful for everybody that's here today. Um, I'll introduce myself. I know first service we had uh, 60 people here for the first time. Today we probably have, I didn't get to see earlier, but just wave at me really quick if your first time today. Thank you guys for joining us today. Welcome. Welcome everybody. We're so glad you're here. My name is Christian. I'm, I'm the campus pastor here. And um, uh, just a little bit about myself. Been married going on, it's going to be four years now in October. And um, come December, as Mike said earlier, we got a lot of babies on the way. We got our baby boy on the way, our first son, our first child, due December. And we are so thrilled. We're excited. Um, but I'm, I'm so honored to be able to bring the word this morning. We're going to be preaching from John chapter 9. And we've been in this series, but today we're going to learn about God's love through the story of his encounter with a blind beggar. So Jesus was out doing ministry, he was teaching, and along the way there happened to be a blind man, blind since birth, that was always on the side of the road begging for help and support, and we're going to come across we're going to see what, what happens when Jesus crossed paths with somebody that, was at, uh, that, had, that couldn't help themselves. So we're going to see how good Jesus is when he runs into this man. And at this time, it was actually very common for people to 
put the blame on the blind man or the blame on his parents. Why was he born blind? You're going to see how that conversation plays out. The disciples were asking. But Jesus wasn't focused on why this man was blind. Jesus was focused on the solution, on helping this man. How many know that's a good God? Sometimes people, you know, they try to get all in your business. They want to figure out what's wrong with you. But it's, it's easy to figure out that we got stuff that's wrong with us that we need help. What we need is someone that can help us get right. That's what Jesus is here to do today. And that's what we're going to see he does for this blind man. Well, let's jump right in. I'm going to read a few scriptures. But as I do, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of this blind man. If we ask ourselves, who are we in this story? This is who we are. So verse 1, it says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins? Was it because of his parents' sins? And Jesus says, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. That's great. I know at first it maybe sounds kind of messed up, like, man, he had to be blind so the power of God could be seen through him. Well, it's not true. But the reality is that all of us have certain conditions or there's certain things we go through. Or maybe situations that you're in that you don't know if God could ever use you, do anything through you, or or, or, uh, his hand cannot be on your life. Well, this right here proves the opposite. That if God can reveal his power through a blind man, then he can do it through you and me. He can do it through somebody that's going through some storms right now. He can do it through somebody that maybe does not have all the answers. Maybe right now you're going through one of the greatest uh, storm seasons of your life or your family or your finances. Well, I got good news for you. I'm here to let you know that it doesn't matter how bad it may seem, God's power can still be revealed in your life and you are not too far from the Lord. Come on, that's good news for somebody. I had a few points I want to share with you from this passage of scripture. The first point I want to to highlight is this. We all have a condition that requires rescuing. We all do. See, if we could solve our own problems, we would have done it by now. And maybe many of us think that if we were just able to make some more money and buy more expensive things that I'll be happy. Or maybe if I was just able to take more adventures and be more spontaneous, let's just say, then I'd be happier. Maybe if I could just be a little bit more like that guy or that girl. If I can get more likes on my social media posts, then I'll be loved. But the reality is it doesn't matter how much we gain, how much we achieve, how much we make. There will always be a God-sized hole in our heart. We'll be empty. Maybe we'll experience a little bit of satisfaction, a little bit of euphoria, Maybe you get a new car or you get those favorite shoes you wanted or you buy that purse that costs way too much. I don't know why purses cost so much. It's crazy. You're right. Amen. Someone say amen. And maybe it gives you that little satisfaction for a moment. But over time, you'll notice that it doesn't feel the same way as it did in the beginning. It begins to fade. There's actually a famous quote from a very famous actor. His name is Jim Carrey. He's very famous. He's made a lot of money. He is, he is you know, a, a adorned, famous. He's recognized all over the world. And he said this, I wish that everybody could achieve all of the dreams and gain everything. Because, uh, and uh, I wish that they can get all, uh, everything they've ever asked for so that they'll realize that that's not the answer. It won't make them happy. What is he saying? He's not wishing bad upon anybody. What he's saying is, I just wish everybody would realize it doesn't matter how much you gain in this life, those material things will not fill the God-sized hole that's in your heart right now. See, nothing else, nobody else, no relationship, nothing can do it, only God can. So we all have a condition that requires rescuing. If If we could solve all of our problems again, we would do it. But we're all born blind. Uh, going back to the chapter, chapter 9, verse 1, Jesus was walking along. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. 
Now, let's put ourselves in his shoes. Maybe you, you weren't born blind, but we were all born into sin. We were all born in this condition. We were all born in a condition that we cannot rescue ourselves from. Our condition of blindness, blindness may look like this. It may, you may be lost. Right now, you may be depressed. Maybe you're on the outside, you smile, but in, on the inside, there's pain and there's torment. You can't sleep at night. Maybe you're addicted and no one knows. Maybe you've been hurt and you're dealing with this pain. Maybe you go throughout your week with anxiety, just overwhelming anxiety that cripples you. Maybe you feel empty, maybe you're angry, maybe you're bitter, lonely, suicidal, full of rage. The list goes on and on. But all of us are just like this blind man, that we're on the side of the road and we have a condition and we could beg for help and we can get money from people and we could beg for support and assistance, but it's not gonna solve the root problem. We're blind, we have a condition, there's something wrong and we need somebody to save us from our condition. This is where we're all at. This is where each and every one of us are. And we're dealing with this problem, it's called sin. And sin doesn't get talked about in church as much as maybe it should be. What is sin? Well, sin is when we miss the mark. Sin is described as when I know I'm supposed to do something, but I don't. Or I know I'm not supposed to do something, but I do it anyway. How many know what I'm talking about? Come on, 10 people are with me? Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? Let's be real, we're a real church here. Let's tell on ourselves. Actually, shame the devil. Let's do that. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. But here's the truth. Ecclesiastes 7.20 says this. It says, for sure, there is not a right and good man on earth who always does good and never sins. I mean, there's good people that you know. I mean, you might be a really good person. But it's no secret you are not perfect. And everyone, everyone around you knows it. See, here's the truth. Unless somebody rescues you, not only will you remain in your current condition, but it will only get worse. Unless somebody comes and rescues us from the condition, this blindness, this condition that we were born with, unless we receive some help, some support, a savior, there's no program that can help you. There's no amount of money we can make that could help you. There's no achievement that can do it. There's only one man who has the power to rescue you from your condition. His name is Jesus Christ, and I'm here to introduce you to him. I'm not the answer. The people around you are not the answer. Jesus is your answer. So Jesus, he's come, he's walking, he sees this man, and we know this, that Jesus is coming to you and I to rescue us while, we, while we're in our helpless condition. He doesn't wait for you to get right in order for him to save you. What a, what a good, that, that is a good God. And that's a good trade. He's saying you could give me your old beat up life and I'll give you a new beginning. So God, you mean to tell me I don't need to clean this up, I don't need to take my life through the, the washer, I don't have to go um, you know, do a make, whole makeover on myself before I present myself to you? God is saying I don't need all of that. I don't need the mask, I don't need the facade, I don't need the fake, I need the real. I need what's really going on, what's in your heart. I need what's, what the pain you're going through. I need what, whatever sin you're dealing with, whatever addiction's in there right now, bring all of that to me, that's what I want. I want you to give me the good, bad, and the ugly, and I'm gonna give you my very best. I'm gonna give you life, I'm gonna give you wholeness, I'm gonna give you a new beginning. Come on, how many know that is a good deal? This is what God promises us. It says in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Is there anybody in here that's been lost before? Man, look, at I got some honest people. All right, now we're telling the truth up in here. Anybody been lost? Anybody made some bad decisions in your life before? I see two hands up right here. I see someone put their foot up over here. Come on, we've all made some bad decisions. You hooked up with the wrong person. How many know what I'm talking about? You, man, okay, we've got some honest people. 
You, you were, you were, you've been hanging around the wrong people. You made a bad decision. You, 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 you took one too many drugs. You tried one too many things. Come on, you stayed out a little bit too late that one night. It made me know we made some bad decisions. We've been lost. And it, no matter how much we try to find ourselves or, or discover new things or get ourselves out of it, it doesn't matter how far we try to go, we just get more and more lost. It's like we're going in circles in the wilderness, looking and looking and trying to find the answer, and we're just going through a cycle. Anybody, anybody been there? Come on, is there anybody in here like you just hate asking for directions? You're one of those guys? At least you're honest. Praise the Lord. Wives telling your husbands right now, they, don't, they do not like asking for directions. They will never admit they're lost. The GPS so go, said go right. No, no, no. I know the way. It's straight. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't tell on them. But the reality is Jesus did not come for people that think they are found. Jesus didn't come for people who think that they are good. Jesus did not come for people who say this, I don't need God. I'm good enough. I'm a good person. I'm okay. I'm perfect. I, I don't need anybody. I don't need anything. Jesus came for the person that can admit, I'm lost. I made decisions that made me end up in places I never thought I'd be. I'm lost. I've done things that I'm ashamed of, and I know I've made mistakes that I, I'm not proud of. I'm lost. I, I found myself going deeper into sin than I ever thought I would go. I never thought I would end up in this place. I never thought I'd be here at this age. I thought it would all be different. I'm lost. Is there anybody in here that can admit I'm lost and I need someone to save me? Jesus came for you. He's looking for you. You don't have to do anything. There's no appointment required. He's ready when you are. Jesus is right here saying, even if no one else sees you, even if you're on the side of a road, a blind beggar, helpless, can do no good for you, your family, or anybody else, there's nothing you can offer. Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter if no one else sees you, I see you, and I've come to you, and I'm here to let you know on this Sunday morning that I got a plan for you, I have a purpose for you, and I am here to let you know I can rescue you from your condition. Come on, how many know this is good news? So what does Jesus do? Jesus goes up to this blind man, and he has a solution. Look at verse 6, John 9, verse 6. He says, then he spit on the ground. Wait, that's your solution? He made mud with the saliva. Ooh. And he spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. Then he told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So the man went, washed, and came back seeing. He could see. Now this is big. Think about this. This is a guy who has never seen in his life. He doesn't know what the color red, blue, orange, he's he never seen those colors. He doesn't know what the skin tone of people, what they look like. He has never seen his own reflection. He doesn't even know what he looks like. His parents look like. Nothing. And he's seen for the very first time. Now he's seen for the first time. This is a miracle. This is big. And I wonder how many of us in here, maybe we're, we're hopeless like this blind man. Maybe you're hopeless right now and you think that you'll never change, that you'll always be in this condition. You'll never be free. You'll, you'll never be able to break that bad habit. You'll never be happy. You'll always be depressed. That's just how I am. I'm just depressed. Maybe you think that those suicidal thoughts that loom through your mind will always be there. Maybe you think that you'll never have healthy relationships. Maybe you think you'll always be angry. Maybe you'll think you'll always be addicted. Maybe you think you'll never have joy. Well, I have good news for you. If a guy that never thought he would see again could one day see, I got good news for you. One day you'll have joy. One day you'll have peace. One day you'll have hope. One day you can be saved. And I believe today is that day. Come on, give God some praise right now if you believe it. 
But here's what's important. This seemed like a very odd set of instructions for this man. First of all, you're talking about, you know, spit and mud. I mean, I'm not trying to get graphic here, but I mean, how much do you got to spit in the ground to make it muddy? I'm sorry. This is tr- it's in the Bible. I'm not trying to. So he had to do that, rub it on his eyes, and then get this. He tells the man, first of all, he's blind, okay? But he also has mud all over his eyes. So even if you could see, if you have mud all over your eyes, you won't be able to see that good. But he's blind, plus mud on his eyes, and then Jesus says, go over there to that lake. Talk about wild, crazy, faith-filled instructions that he gives him. Now, I want to tell you right now that your freedom is on the other side of your obedience. And if you're ever going to experience the miracle of being free, of being whole, of, of this condition finally being healed and totally becoming a brand new person, then it's gonna require you saying yes to God even if it sounds crazy. It may sound like, how, how could I ever do that? Maybe you never thought you'd see yourself in church on a Sunday, but look where you're at today. You're here. It may sound crazy. It may sound crazy for you that you're here, that you're listening to the word, that you're even receiving what God has to say for you. But all of these instructions, they may sound crazy, but I promise you this, when you obey the Lord, there are blessings on the other side. There's breakthrough on the other side. There's freedom on the other side. All we have to do is just trust in the Lord. Someone say, I trust you, God. Look, even if it sounds crazy, we can trust him. Even if it sounds like there's something that you can't do, you can trust him. He told Peter, walk on water. Peter took his foot out of the boat, stepped on water, and began to walk. There's oh, so many cases in Scripture, and there's even cases today where we see people just obeying the Lord, and miracles are on the other side. We can trust God with his instruction. Amen? Let's look at point number two. Jesus offers us a brand new life. He offers us a brand new life. John 9, verse 8, it says, His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar, they asked each other, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Wait, is this the same guy? Some said he was, and others said, no, 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 it just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the one, it's me, that's me. So they asked him, who healed you, what happened? And he told them, the man that they called Jesus, he made mud, he spread it over my eyes, and he told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed, and now I can see. I can see everything. This is incredible. But what I want to point out here is that the life that Jesus is offering you, it's a whole new reality. It's a whole new ball game. It's completely different than the life you lived. I believe that Jesus wants to give you a life that's so brand new that you become unrecognizable to your past. I believe that it doesn't matter what kind of life you used to live, that when people see you, they would, it would be hard for them to believe that you used to be that blind beggar. There's no way that that's them. You you mean to tell me you used to gang bang and run the streets? You used to tell me that you were cracked out out of your mind like a zombie on baseline? You mean to tell me that this is who you were? I, I cannot believe that you're so full of anger. You're the sweetest, nicest person I've ever met. You're so full of love. You mean to tell me you used to be full of hate? You mean to tell me you used to hate yourself and now you're the most confident person I ever met? I don't want to be just like you. See, the blind beggar's friends could not believe it was the blind beggar. They said, that's not him. There's no way. Maybe it just looks like him. I believe 
that you're gonna get, you're gonna receive such a good thing from God, such a new life, that people in your life are gonna look at you today and not even recognize who you are. And I believe this is gonna become a witness to them. What does that mean? That you, through your life, you can see people all around you being changed and transformed. Through your story, people can now come to know who God is. Why? Because you open the door to him and now they're saying, maybe I should do the same. If God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Come on, how many want their life to be an example to people all around them? He can do it for you. He did it for this blind beggar. See, maybe you used to be an addict. Maybe you used to be hateful. Maybe you were lost. Maybe you're full of pride. Maybe you're always fearful. Maybe you've been selfish, depressed. Maybe you've been bitter. Maybe you've been violent. Maybe you deceive others. Maybe you're full of anxiety. You're rebellious. You're judgmental towards others. Maybe you're just empty inside. It does not matter. Just like this man, one moment with Jesus can change your entire reality to be something brand new. This is what he's offering you today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when anyone is in Christ, it is a whole new world. The old things are gone and suddenly everything is brand new. This is the promise that Jesus is offering us today. Trade in your old life. Trade in your old condition. Give it to me and I'll give you something brand new. This is a good deal. This is the good news. When we receive Jesus, we receive new hope, new joy, new life, new freedom, a new identity, and a whole new future. Maybe right now you're headed on a road of destruction. Maybe you've been on the fast track to hell. You've been feeling like your life is a living hell today. Well, I got good news for you. God can totally change your future and your direction so that you can be headed to a blessing, a bright future, a future full of hope and good plans from God. How many would love if car dealership called you and they said, you know that hoopty you got? You got like three different types of rims on your car. You got, it's all dinged up, scratched up. The, the, the little, what do you call that? The linens falling on your head every time. Your, your um, what is that thing called? I don't even know what stuff is called. What is that, the, the visor? It don't even stay up. The, the headlight, everything, it's falling apart. You got a hoopty of a car, and the dealer calls you and says, hey, bring your hoopty, we'll give you something brand new, off the lot, never been seen before. That's a deal. That's a deal. That'll never happen. <laughs> but that's a deal. But we don't need a new car. Some of us, maybe you think a new car is gonna, it's not the car, but this is the deal that Jesus is offering us. Trade in your life. Maybe you got a hoopty life. Maybe in your life you got three different types of rims. You're trying things out. Maybe your engine of your life, it's barely running. Maybe you're on fumes right now. You could barely get to the next day. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You're living just for day to day right now emotionally. You don't know how you're going to make it to the other side. And God is saying, trade that in and I'll give you something brand new off the lot. And what I give you will run. What I give you will get you to your destination. What I give you will fill you with peace. What I'll give you is a good thing. You don't got to worry about stalling. You don't got to worry about breaking down on the side of the road. I got something good for you. I got a new life. I got salvation. I have forgiveness. I have peace. I have my salvation. I have eternal life. Come on. How many want a new thing from the Lord today? He's a good, good God. Not only is he offering you a new life, he's, also, he's offering you a clean slate. It says in Hebrews 8, 12, he says, and I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. What, what good news is this? This is great news. For some of us, maybe we forgive, but we never forget. Maybe for you, you have to forgive yourself of something you've done in your past. Maybe there's something you're ashamed of. It's time to forgive yourself. It's time to let it go because God wants to forgive you today. And if God wants to forgive you, then it's time for you to forgive yourself. But sometimes we don't forget, and that's just the truth. 
we don't forget those things. And those things stay in our memories. And maybe they become part of your testimony. But what's amazing about God, what's amazing about his love, is that he is telling you, I will forget your sin. I will forget your sin so that when I look at you, I just see perfection. When I look at you, I see a masterpiece. When I look at you, I see my precious son, my precious daughter. When I look at you, I see someone who's perfect, without blemish, without fault. When I look at you, I see the righteousness of Christ. I see perfection. That's what God sees when he looks at you. We just need to give it to him. And he'll give us his life. Come on, that's good news. And the third point today is this. Jesus saves, not religion. Jesus saves, not religion. So if anybody has ever told you, you need to be a member of this church in order for you to go to heaven, um, you're in a cult, okay? That is a cult. If anyone ever tell, told you, um, you need to do, um, you know, X, Y, and Z, you got to, you know, do these rituals for two years, you got to go do this, and you got to, and then you qualify, and then maybe we'll check, and we'll see your giving report, and then maybe you're saved. Oof. It's a lie. It's not true. See, that's religion. That will not save you, but Jesus will, and Jesus can, and Jesus wants to save you. See, at the end of this story, the religious leaders, check this out. This gets, this gets crazy. The religious leaders are now, start talking to this blind man, because they know this is a blind guy. He's been outside of the temple begging for a long time. So they're trying to figure out what, what just happened. This guy can see. So these religious leaders, they start focusing more on their own rules than they focus on a miracle that they just witnessed. Look at John 9, starting from verse 13. It says, then they took the man who had been blind, they took him to the Pharisees. Because it was on the Sabbath that Jesus made the mud and healed him. So the Pharisees asked the man all about it. He told them, he put the mud over my eyes and when I washed it away, I could see. I mean, simple as that. So some of the Pharisees said, this man, Jesus, is not from God. Here we go, these Pharisees. He says, for he's working on the Sabbath. Another said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So now they're divided. They don't know what's right and what's wrong. Verse 17, then the, then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind. And they demanded, what's your opinion about this man who healed you? That's a ridiculous question to ask somebody. What do you think about the guy that just saved your life? How do you feel about him? Well, I would, I would say, I don't know. You know, I'm not really sure. Yeah, right, of course he's going to say, he saved me. I was blind, now I could see. What a crazy question. These Pharisees. So then, so then he goes, oh, I think he must be a prophet. Verse 18, then the Jewish leaders still refused to believe that this man was blind and now could see. So what do they do? They call his parents. They get his parents in here. How do they, how, where were the parents at that they could just call them? They didn't have phones. I don't know, I don't know what happened. So they asked them, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he now see? So they're like, they're basically, you know, we know this is our son. That's true. We know he was born blind. But, you know, we know that. But we don't know how he can see. And we don't know who healed him. So ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. Even the parents are like, I, I don't know, I don't know. Who knows? They, the parents don't, don't want anything to do with it because they don't want to get in trouble. Verse 24, scroll down, it says, so for the second time they called in the man who had been blind and he told them. They said, God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. These Pharisees, like, like Pastor said on Wednesday, sometimes you just wanna, oh, these Pharisees, you know what I mean? Verse 25, and he says this, what a great answer. He says, I don't know whether he is a sinner, but I know this. I was blind, and now I could see. That's all I know. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about church. 
I don't know anything about this whole Christian thing. I don't know any, anything about all this religious stuff. I'm not a religious person. I, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't go to catechism. I didn't do all this stuff. I don't know none of that. But what I do know, I was blind. Now I could see. What I do know, I was depressed. Now I got some joy. What I do know, I was addicted. Now I'm free. What I do know is that I used to be suicidal. Now I can't wait to wake up the next morning. What I do know is I used to hate people, but now I love those around me. What I do know, I used to be selfish. Now I love to give to those that need me. I was blind, now I can see. I was lost and now I am found. Come on, somebody in here that knows they need a rescuer, knows they need a savior, needs to give God some praise for saving you when you could not save yourself. Give God a shout of praise in this place. He's a good God. See, one moment with Jesus could change your life. I've heard people say, religion isn't for me. Well, you know what? It's not for me either. But you know what is for me and is for everyone? Jesus is for everyone. He said in Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You could have been blind from birth. You could be addicted right now. You could have done something on your way to church that you're ashamed of. It doesn't matter, you're at the hospital. You're in the right place and the doctor is here in the room and he's ready to give you a new beginning. Jesus is ready to forgive you of all your sin. He's ready. He's ready to give you a new beginning. Isaiah 1.18 says this, come now, let's settle this. I love that statement. Come right now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. Jesus is saying, I'm ready right now, let's go. Let's settle this thing. No more delaying, no more waiting. No more putting it off. No more saying maybe tomorrow. No more saying maybe I'll go home and clean up and come back. No more saying I'll have next week. We do not know if we'll have next week. We don't know if we'll have tomorrow. It's right now. If you're gonna get saved, if you're gonna give your life to the Lord, if you're gonna receive that new beginning, then you gotta take advantage of the moment you're in right now. That blind beggar happened to cross paths with Jesus I just imagine how his life would have been if he would have said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to rub the mud in my eye. I don't want to go to the lake. I want to sit here and beg. Maybe if I stop begging, I won't get the money. I won't get this. Just imagine if he would have passed that opportunity he had with Jesus. And I'm here to tell you today, don't pass your opportunity you have right now with Jesus to get a new beginning in your life. You can be forgiven of all your sin you can receive a brand new beginning right now if you're willing to surrender everything. There's good news at the end of this chapter. The blind man not only gets healed from his sight, but something amazing happens. Verse 35 at the end of the chapter. It says, when Jesus heard what happened, he found the man and he asked, do you believe in the son of man? And the man answered, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he's speaking to you. He said, yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshiped Jesus. It's good. He's speaking to you right now. Jesus is speaking to you. Do you want to believe in him? And like this blind beggar, we have a condition that we cannot rescue ourselves from. There's a problem inside. Our problem is sin. Our problem is we've lived a life maybe we're ashamed of, 
done things that were wrong. We've all messed up. But Jesus is saying, none of that matters. What matters is right now, if you want to see and if you want to believe. You know that the Bible says there's actual, there's a price for sin. The price for sin, the Bible says, is death. This is what that means, that in our lives today, it doesn't just mean we'll die one day, but it means that we'll begin to experience death. Relationships, the good things in our life, our joy, our peace, all these good things, sin begins to bring destruction into. It's like a cancer in our life. The Bible says the wage of sin is death. This is a price. So we make an exchange. Okay, I'll sin, but you also open the door for death and decay. The Bible says Jesus, he came to die for us while we were still sinners. So that means it's the same idea with this blind beggar. He found you while you're still blind. He found you while you were lost, full of sin, hopeless. You may be thinking, well, I'm a good enough person. I don't, I'm not going to hell. I'm a good person. But the scary truth is this, that it doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't make up for one sin. The only answer, the only hope we have is someone to save us. And that's why Jesus is called our Savior because he left heaven on a rescue mission to earth, lived this life, went to the cross, died on it for you and me, and resurrected from the dead to save you and to rescue you because he loves you. He didn't have to do it. He was without sin. He didn't deserve it. He did it because he loves you and he wants to forgive you. So I want you to do me a favor, close your eyes. And I'm only asking you to do this because I just want this moment to be distraction free and with no one leaving. If what you heard today, you feel like this was for you. If you're saying, I wanna be forgiven. I wanna know if I were to die today, I wouldn't end up in hell forever, but I'd end up in heaven. Why? Because you want to put your faith in Jesus Christ right now. If you're saying, I want to be forgiven of my sin, I know I'm a sinner. I I know I'm, I'm crooked inside. I know I'm messed up. I need a Savior. I'm lost. I'm blind. If you want to admit today and confess Jesus as Lord and receive this free gift of eternal life, if you want to receive his love, there's no greater gift in the world Don't miss this moment. Take advantage of the moment. Jesus is coming to you and saying, will you believe in me? I'm gonna ask you at the count of three, if you're saying that's me, I wanna receive Jesus. I wanna be forgiven of my sins and I wanna receive eternal life. Then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hands all over this room. One, two, three, hands up, hands up. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Anybody else? Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Keep your hands up. Twenty-eight. Keep your hands up. Twenty-nine. Keep your hands up. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Keep your hands up, 39, 40, 41, 42. Keep your hands up, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, anybody else, 77, 78, 79, 80, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Anybody else you're saying that's me? 91. Come on, let's give God some praise. 91 people giving their life to Jesus today. Stand to your feet right now and give God some praise in this moment. Big favor.
before you leave, there's 91 of you. And I want you to know this, that blind beggar, he had haters. Those people couldn't believe it was him. The Pharisees were hating on him. I'm telling you right now, all 91 of you, not one, not one of you have a hater in this room. We love you, we're proud of you. We, can't, we are excited, we're celebrating. All 91 people, I want you to do me a favor and we're gonna need 91 altar workers up here just so we know. I want you to make your way forward. Would you make your way out of your seat? Would you come forward to the front? We want to pray with you. We want to meet you. We want to congratulate you. We want to just celebrate with you. Come on, let's give them a round of applause. 91 people, make their way forward right now. If you raise your hand, come up, come up, come up. From the back row to the side rows to the front. Come on up, we want to pray with you right now. Let's clap for them as they make their way forward. Come all the way to the front. Come all the way up. Come on, they're still coming, church. We're still clapping. We're gonna need more altar workers up here, please. We need men, we need women. If you're an altar worker, a DG leader, come on up, we need your help. We need your help. Everyone who came up, just look at me for a quick second. We're so proud of you. It's the best decision you could ever make in your life. Jesus absolutely loves you. He has a plan for you. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna stand with you. We're gonna help you in this journey, in this walk. Your next step is to get baptized. Someone say baptized. What does that mean? Well, maybe you've seen it. Bring the music down just a little bit. When you get, bring it down just a little bit. So when we get baptized, what happens is this. You're gonna go in the water and it represents like you're dying to the old you. It's like putting the old you in a grave. I'm dying to the old me. And when you come up from the water, you come up a brand new person, new heart, new mind, a clean slate. Your record is wiped clean. No sin, no blemish. So the person in front of you, we're going to pray with you, and we're going to help you get connected to your next step. But when you get baptized, it's this Wednesday. This Wednesday? Wait, that's not enough time. Yet, well, if, if, we had, if anything, we would do it now, okay? But we're going to do it Wednesday. If you want to get baptized, come this Wednesday. Come at 6 o'clock. Come a little bit early. Then when service starts at seven o'clock, you're gonna get baptized, outdoor service. It's gonna be powerful. God's spirit's gonna move. And it's gonna be refreshing for you guys because you know, it's been hot outside, so it's gonna feel good. Come on, how many are excited for all these souls that are up here? We need a lot more workers up here, guys. I know I hate to make this call a million times, but we could really use your help. If you're out there and you hear me, I could use your help. DG leaders, ministry leaders, come on up. All right, let's pray this together. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for saving me. I admit I've sinned against you. But you love me so much that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so I can be saved. So now, I put my faith in you. I was blind, but now I could see. I was lost, but now I'm found. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same again. Fill me with your spirit. Give me a new heart. Take my depression and give me joy. Take my anxiety, give me peace. Take all suicidal thoughts and, get, and, and fill me with your life. I'll never be the same again. I belong to you. And right now, take my unforgiveness. Come on, right now I believe there's someone that needs to forgive somebody. If you're holding on to unforgiveness, if there's a pain, if someone hurt you, 
That person right now, they're probably coming to your mind. Let it go right now in this moment and God can give you peace so that you no longer have to be trapped by that spirit of unforgiveness. Right now, you can be free. You can be free. Say, Lord, I forgive all those who have hurt me. I let it go. Give me peace in my heart. I forgive them. I release it to you. I'll never be the same. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, and for your salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Church, can we give God a shout of praise? If you know you were blind, but now you can see, give him a shout of praise like he deserves it. So, all those up here, let's pray with them, altar workers. Church, we love you. We'll see you this Wednesday night. We're going to have service out.